tutorial for you today. Actually, this is a new video of an old tutorial. I was reminded recently that I have this pot holder pattern already on my blog and it's been there for a while and I batch sewed these one Christmas as gifts and they were a big hit and they're very, very easy to make. There's no quilting, no binding. They're just an easy pot holder idea. Great for kids so they don't burn their hands. And I just think they're really easy and they were worth a revisit. So I worked on updating that post. I also created a printable version of this like I have been doing for so many of my tutorials. So you can purchase in my shop a printable instructions with photos of this so you don't have to keep referring back to the video so often. And so this is what I'm gonna show you how to make today. You're gonna need some cotton fabrics. You're gonna need cotton batting and you're gonna need a product called Insole Bright or Insole Fleece. It looks like this. This is a Pellon product and I'll link to it in the notes or in the description, of course. This is a heat resistant fabric. So this will just help you not burn your hands using your pot holders. And I think that's it. Before we get going though, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss new tutorials. I've been adding them much more often lately. Thank you for all of your support and follows and likes. Um, it makes it more fun when people are so grateful and comment and YouTube interaction has just been really, really fun for me lately. There's so many nice comments. Anyway, make sure you hop over to read the blog post if you want to see the instructions there or to grab the printable instructions too. So just click the links below. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at pincutso. So if you ever make anything with my patterns, I would love to see them. Um, let's see. I think that's all. Let's get going. Okay, we're gonna get started. First, I already pre-cut my fabrics just to save, um, just to save this video from becoming, you know, 30 minutes long. <laughs> so I have cut my main fabric pieces 11 by seven, 11 long, seven wide. And then I have cut my pocket pieces 10 by seven. So they're both seven, but the pockets are an inch shorter because these are gonna get folded. Then this is a product called, um, it's sometimes called Insole Bright, but I got the Pellon Insole Fleece, and it's a very similar product, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. This is a heat resistant batting. It's not totally necessary, but you know, have you ever had a cheap pot holder that you could still feel the heat through and you didn't want to hold it on too long? This will help it not feel cheap. <laughs> and then the directions recommend to use to use the Insole Bright with one to two pieces of cotton batting. So in the past, I've only used one and it was fine. This time I'm gonna use two. If you have sort of a wimpier sewing machine and your sewing machine just cannot handle it, just use one, it'll be fine. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is go, oh, also don't worry, cause I will put those, I mean, all of those dimensions for cutting are in the blog post and in the written instructions that you can buy on my shop. So you don't have to keep referring back to the video just for the dimensions. So the first thing you're gonna do is fold your pocket pieces in half widthwise and go press them like so. Okay, then you're going to line those up, the raw edges together on either side of one of your main pieces. I'm using this cute rooster fabric. I just think they're funny. Okay, so then you're going to go baste this together with a long machine stitch. Let me put some pins. Try to stick to a quarter inch seam so you don't have to remove the stitches later if they show. Okay, so my pockets are held in place. Now, you're going to take your other main piece, turn it over, and we're gonna sandwich the insole fleece in between my layers of cotton batting. So I have this, pretty side down, then I have a layer of cotton batting, then I'm gonna place my insole fleece. It doesn't matter which direction. And then I'm gonna place my other piece of cotton batting. So if you want to, you can go baste these all together. Um, you will definitely probably want, I said probably, definitely, those are two different things, but you will probably want to use a walking foot for your sewing machine. I know I talk about this with so many projects, but that's because I sew with batting a lot. And this helps everything not get bunched up and shift while you sew. 
My machine, a FAF, has one built in, but this is a universal one and you can, I'll put a link to where you can get one. They're not expensive at all, but you will use it so much and it will save you a lot of frustration. So you can go base that together if you want using your walking foot, or you can go ahead and take this other piece, place it face down on top of all of that. And where's my clips? I'm gonna use my wonder clips and pin this whole thing together. If you were gonna make this for a young kid, I would maybe make it probably an inch and a half shorter and maybe an inch smaller this way. I haven't tested that size because, you know, kids come in all sizes. So if you have made one of these for kids and resized it, let me know how that works out. But I like these for kids because they can't burn their hands. And a lot of time, a lot of times oven mitts are too big for them. And so they seem clunky, which is almost more dangerous. So these are nice because they can grab something, not like a pot holder where their thumb and fingers are exposed, but they can prevent burns this way. Okay, so I'm gonna go stitch all the way around this, leaving an opening for turning about this big. Okay, there we go. With my walking foot, it was no problem. Um, again, like I said, if you're having trouble with all these thick layers, use a larger needle like a 90 or eliminate one of these pieces of batting. That should help you. Okay, hope I left my opening big enough. I'm going to trim the corners, not too close, so they turn out nice and neat. Then, when you're in your opening, reach in between the two main pieces and turn it right side out. Okay, employ a chopstick to help you if you need to get these corners poked out the best you can. So it actually looks like a corner and not a curve. Oh, I broke my chopstick in there. Well, a piece of my chopstick is gonna be immortalized in this pot holder forever. Okay, so now you're gonna go press the heck out of this getting all those edges out so it doesn't look like a wonky rectangle. It actually looks like a rectangle. And you're gonna press this in as if you had sewn it. All right, last step. Didn't I say this was so easy? I'm just going to place a couple clips where my opening is, and I'm gonna go top stitch all the way around this. Still using the walking foot. Okay, I'm all done. So my top stitching, also sewed my opening closed. Make sure that it's not, make sure that there's no raw edges in there that poked out on you. And I'm all done. These are really easy to batch sew. I gave them as Christmas gifts one year and I just made a ton of them all at one time. And it was so fast. You can see this is a really easy project. So if you make some, please let me know. And I'd love to see a picture uh, or tag me on Instagram or shoot me an email. Nikki at pencutsostudio.com and I will see you soon with more tutorials. Bye.